Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Community Church in Glen Allen. We are a welcoming congregation where we strive to transform ourselves and the world through love, wonder, and connection. My name is Reverend Sarah Goodman and I use she, her pronouns. As we celebrate Easter today, we will explore the theme of transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? And what do we have to give up to be transformed? So a couple of announcements for this morning. Turn your phone off or to airplane mode if you already haven't to help with the connection for our folks at home. Families are invited to join us after the service for our annual Easter egg hunt. It will be a blast. I hope to see you there. And check your e-news to sign up for cottage meetings around our new behavior covenant. Welcome, welcome. Good morning and happy Easter. I'm Carrie Williams Jensen and I use she, her pronouns. And um, I'm kind of involved all over the place, especially music, like tech, um, love doing worship associates. So welcome. Whether you are here for the first time or the thousandth time, welcome. Whatever you are facing in your own life, welcome. This is a place where we try our best to be real with one another, to get through hard things together, to remind ourselves and one another at all times of the values that ground and center us, that motivate and move us. Whoever you are, whatever your faith journey, whomever you love, you are welcome here. We welcome all who seek to know the sacred and all who seek to make our world more just. When we come here with our whole and broken selves, we commit to be together in covenant, to live out our values and to work together towards our mission, to transform ourselves and the world through love, wonder, and connection. Please join me in our affirmation of who this community is, beginning with that all-important word, love is the message of this church, and service is our way. This is our great covenant together, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I invite you now to rise in body or spirit to sing our opening hymn, Lo, the Earth Awakes Again, number 61 in the gray hymnal.
You may be seated. I will come light our chalice as I share these chalice lighting words. Oop, it's not lit. No worries, you got it. Adina will help. We light our chalice as a beacon of hope for all who seek our light. Thank you. Howdy. And happy Easter. Oh my goodness. Okay. The coffee's after service, but we can perk up a little bit. <laughs> my name is Adina Danouf. I use she or they pronouns, and I am your director of Lifespan Religious Exploration. And if you were here last week, we talked a lot about spring having sprung, and with spring comes lots of new life and regrowth. Bulbs awaken from the earth and start to reach toward the sun. Bare tree branches start to bud and bloom. Some animals begin laying eggs filled with so much potential for new life and promise. Not the eggs we're gonna find later, I promise. <laughs> that potential and promise, like in all things new, allows space for transformation and discovery, which, surprise, reminds me of a story. <laughs> but what the real surprise might be is that I have some friends that are going to help me with my story today. Where's my first friend, Megan? Yeah. So uh, my friends know to listen for their turn. We practiced. And here we go. Once there was a being. Hello, I am being. It was a very new being, all shiny and little and ready to grow out into the great big world. But before it could go, the being thought to itself, I wish I had a way to know who I am. What makes me, me? Then, as beings do, it just kind of shook the feeling off. And as often happens in stories, the being went along its way, doing whatever beings do. What do you do? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> OK, well, you know, being -y things? It kept going along and such until one day it sensed something. I sense something. It tried to figure out what it was sensing, and at first it was hard. Maybe it's, no, that's not right. But it tried, and it tried to figure it out until finally, it got it. It sensed its own inner song. enjoyed its inner song and listening to it and appreciating it again and again and again, but not right now. <laughs> Maybe now it knew what it was, what made this being a being. But as often happens in stories, time passed and the being started to grow and change. It had experiences. Experiences? Yeah, Bells, experiences. It encountered things that it liked and things that it did not like. It had happy times and sad times, and it met other beings, and it listened to their inner songs. And after a while, its song began to change some too. It now sounded more like this. that its inner song could change. Was this its real inner song now? Was the other one wrong? Is this what made this being a being? 
Oh well. The being enjoyed its inner song, listening to it and appreciating it again and again, and as often happens in stories, time passed and the being started to learn things. Learn things? Yeah, learn things. It learned things that were boring and things that were interesting. It learned about math and science and art and music and random facts and fun tidbits. Did you know that Easter? And Halloween compete for the most candy sales every year. In fact, some years people buy more candy the week before Easter than the week before Halloween. That's because Halloween purchases are usually more spread out over the month. Whoa. (laughs) And as it learned, it met other beings who were learning, and it listened to their inner songs. After a while, its song began to change more, and now it sounded like this. The being was starting to wonder if its inner song would ever stop changing. But it decided that this song was even better than its old ones, and it enjoyed its inner song, listening to it and appreciating it again and again. And as often happens in stories, time passed, and the being started to feel things. Feel things? Yeah, feel things. It felt happy and sad. It felt angry and worried and confused. (laughs) It felt cheerful and surprised and cautious. Oh no. (laughs) It felt so many different types of things. I wish I could bake a cake full of rainbows and smiles and everyone would eat it and be happy. Shout out to the millennials, mean girls, yeah? Okay. Uh, As it felt, it met other beings who had feelings, and it listened, oh no, I stole your boom marker. (laughs) And it listened, say right there, yep. It listened to their inner songs, boom whackers. Yes. And after a while, its song began to change again, and now it sounded like this. Yes, thank you. Yep, back to your seat seat. Yep. The being realized that after all this time, all the feelings it had, all of the things it learned, all of the experiences it had, and all of the other beings that it met, its inner song was a whole new song altogether. The essence of the song was similar to how it had begun but the things that it went through changed it, and the being was transformed. (laughs) How beautiful is that? And guess what? We can say the same about us too. Over time, all of the feelings we have, all of the things we learn, all of the experiences we have, and all of the beings that we meet, they change us. We are whole new people all together. The essence of who we are is always there, but the things that we go through change us. We are transformed. I'm prepping you for later, okay? So my challenge to you this Easter is to find a new you this spring. Maybe it's hidden in an Easter egg, maybe it's in an experience or learning something or feeling something. Be the best being you could be. Exactly. Thank you, and we are going to head to class.
our offering and acknowledging all the ways we give to this church and this world. May there be an offering to sustain and grow the life and mission of this church inside and outside our walls. May we give in love and in hope. I was supposed to say that before. Thank you for your offering and all the ways you give to our life and ministry with your time, talent, treasure, and trust. Together, our gifts allow us to expand and strengthen the tapestry of love, wonder, and connection that blesses this church and transforms us and our world. Please join me now in a time of meditation and prayer. Find a comfortable place for your body, whatever that may be. Notice your breathing. Take a moment to just be in this space. This morning, I offer prayers for Baltimore, for the Key Bridge, and those workers who lost their lives when it collapsed, their families, and everyone affected. This morning, I offer a prayer for Gaza for the people who are still suffering, still starving, still losing their lives. This morning, I offer a prayer for the holy days of holy, Passover, and Easter, all celebrated, oh, and Ramadan, all celebrated in this time. This morning, I offer a joyous prayer for visibility, holding those who can't be visible at this point in their lives, in our hearts, 
and hope that they can find a way to live as their true selves however they can. Now, we'll say one last prayer for the hearts that are broken, for the hearts that are celebrating, for the joy and sorrows that surround us. Amen. Now, we will light our candles of joys and sorrows. There are three ways to light a candle. First, you can raise your hand and Carrie will light a candle for you. Second, if you're online, you can put your name or the name you want to be held in the chat box and we'll read it after all uh, the folks have a chance to come round. And third, if you want to light your own candle, you'll rise and come around to light one. Carrie will hand you a candle. So first, if you would like Carrie to light a candle for you, please raise your hand. Gail, Eva, Scott, Diane, Brianna, Neil. And if you'd like to light a candle for yourself, you may rise and come around and collect a candle. Don't forget, if you're at home, there's still time to put a name in the chat box. light a candle for Elena Brooks Perkins. Uh, Leah DaCosta. Patricia Pythian. Pythian, pardon me. Cindy and Kevin Paris. And we 
light one final candle for all the joys and sorrows that remain in our hearts this morning, unspoken, unshared, but held nonetheless. Please join in our sung prayer response, There is a Love. Our first reading this morning is from the biblical story of Jesus from Mark, the, I don't remember what the, NRSV, I don't remember what those stand for. Um, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after the sunrise, They were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Mark 16, uh, 1 through 5, verses 1 through 5. Our second reading is, We Keep Rising in Love by Molly Gordon. The women were there to the very end. They watched as his body was taken down and wrapped in linen and placed in a tomb. I imagine them wailing, keening, or perhaps their limbs felt as heavy as their hearts. Perhaps you too have experienced that spectrum from raging to frozen grief. The earliest telling of the story ends in bewilderment. For the women of the story and for the reader alike, trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid." End quote. Could Jesus really rise again? Could it really be that the violence of empire and the pain of loss would be denied the final word? In that ancient telling, we don't get an answer. There is no resolution. There is no certainty. There is only a seed of complicated hope and the persistence of human love to help it grow. What strikes me about the ancient text is that it was not only Jesus who rose up that morning. It was also the women who loved him, who rose up from the pit of their grief to tend to him. It was also the movement that his teaching sparked, a community who rose up to spread his message of power in weakness and the victory of love. Is new life possible? Is love stronger even than death? The question itself invites us to rise up and to live as though it were true, to make it true in our living. The lesson for the women for the forces of empire, for us, is this. You can crush love down, bury it, cover it over, but it will rise. It will reach for the sun, and we will reach for each other. Love will have the final word, even if that word is just a question, a wild possibility, 
a whisper to rise and follow wherever it may lead. Communities formed and nurtured in love will rise up for and with each other again and again. If we've learned nothing else these years, it is this. Even when everything is uncertain, even when we are grieving, even when the loss keeps coming, even when we are forced apart, even when we are bone weary, we keep reaching for one another. We keep rising in love.
We are united in purpose because we are greater than the sum of our parts. These are the Maya Angelou lyrics from our choir anthem. When we're united in purpose, every good deed that we do makes a difference, makes a change. Even if that change doesn't seem huge, it blends with the other deeds that others do to make changes, to transform the world for the better. When we want to change, it can be hard to see the way forward. One good deed, then the next. But when we don't want to change, the path is still before us. Even if we're slowing, even if we're moving backwards, away from it, eventually we realize it's going to loop back around to the same place. Change is inevitable. We don't have to like it, we don't always like it, but it is inevitable. As Unitarian Universalists, we have come from a long history of Christian traditions. Both Unitarians and Universalists consider themselves Christian denominations before the merger in 1961. But at that point, they agreed that the joint denomination was not just Christian anymore. Unitarian Universalism became truly open to seekers, of different religions and different spiritual paths and no religion at all. Our Christian heritage is very present in our congregations though in ways like we celebrate Christmas and Easter. Although our understanding of these holidays has shifted from the more traditional practices of the holidays as someone who grew up Unitarian Universalist, I heard some of these stories on the major holidays, like Jesus in the manger with the star overhead, and Jesus dying on the cross, and the rock rolled away from his tomb. But of course, they were just stories to me, like the story of Buddha under the Bodhi tree, or even the tortoise and the hare, stories that teach something, that open questions, that help us to learn more. I remember as a kid hearing the story of Jesus' tomb and pointing to the logical conclusion I would come to if the door of some place was open and a body was gone. Uh, someone stole the body, obviously. Hello. <laughs> this is before I realized that biblical stories aren't meant to be taken literally. Biblical stories are meant to give the readers context for their beliefs and practices. Stories were meant to support the structures and strictures of Christianity as it spread throughout the Western world. These stories were meant to bring people into the religion, sparking interest and excitement in those hearing them for the first and thousandth time. Stories are so important to our understanding of ourselves and the world. There are times when speaking about numbers and showing graphs is gonna be an effective way to get information across. But if we wanna to speak to people's hearts, if we wanna speak in a way that will move them, if we want to encourage change and growth, story is the most important tool in our toolbox. Melanie Green, a communication professor at the University of Buffalo, who studies the power of narrative says, solid information in any form is good, but that's not necessarily enough. A vivid emotional story can give that extra push to make it feel more real and more important. So if you look at the times someone's beliefs have changed, it's often because they have a story that hits them in the heart personal stories about aha moments of realization, stories about experiences that aren't our own, but happen to a trusted friend, stories about loss and hope, stories about the love that humans share. These are the kinds of stories that change our hearts, change our lives for the better. Stories like the consequences of a violent death a beloved teacher who stood up for what was good and right and was taken from the world too young, killed by the state apparatus that oppressed those that it colonized. 
stories that hear from the people who loved him, three women who were his faithful followers coming to prepare his body for burial only to find that the resting place was empty. And the stories of other followers seeing him alive once again, that's a powerful and emotional story for many people. I first encountered the emotions around the story of Jesus' death when I attended a Good Friday service at my seminary. It was fo focused on the Stations of the Cross, as most Good Friday services are, telling the story of the events that led up to Jesus' crucifixion. In the service, folks that I knew from my classes, folks that I knew who are highly intellectual and not overly emotional were weeping at the story weeping at the tragedy of it all. Now, I don't know that everyone in the chancel was experiencing a lively grief, but I do know that I was thrown off by that experience. It was really uncomfortable for me to be present to the grief that was really, really real in this room when I didn't have that same experience. The story didn't have that meaning for me. It reminded me once again that I am not Christian and to honor those who are, I need to take their stories and the traditions very seriously. It also helped me to understand the connections between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the contrast between grief and joy, the celebration that goes along with the realization that what you've lost is not really gone. That is a moment of joy indeed. We are transformed when we grieve, when we've lost something or someone important to us. We come out the other side a different person, a different community, a different religion even. Which begs the question, do we need to lose something in order to change? Do we need to sacrifice something for transformation? The Christian message around Jesus and the cross has certainly been framed that way for generations. Jesus sacrificed himself to save people from sin. The animal kingdom has examples of this need for sacrifice every day. The caterpillar has to basically disintegrate its body inside a chrysalis to become a butterfly. The snake has to shed its skin, and the crab has to abandon its shell to be able to grow. But do we have to sacrifice to transform? Does something have to end to make room for the new? In addition to being Easter, today is the Trans Day of Visibility a celebration of the presence and beauty and value of trans people. I think it's a great time to honor the bravery and sacrifices that many trans people have made. Most trans people have spent more than a little time exploring and fighting and finally honoring who they are while needing to find ways to say goodbye to the person they lived as before. In order to become their most whole selves, they have to shed the skin of the expectations of others. Trans people have been facing greater persecution in our country for the last six, seven years, while at the same time, more and more trans people are expressing their true selves. And the attitudes towards trans folks in general has shifted radically in the last 10 to 15 years. We are so fortunate to be able to celebrate the existence and love of the trans community. As the rebirth of spring, the unfurling of the butterfly's wings, we celebrate the joy and beauty of people who have gone through a radical transformation. Trans, non-binary, and gender fluid people are a blessing to us every single day. Day. As my colleague Molly Hosh Gordon said in her reading, the lesson for us in this is you can crush love down, you can bury it, cover it over, and it will rise. It will reach for the sun, it will reach 
for each other. Love will have the final word, even if that word is just a question, a wild possibility, a whisper to rise and follow wherever it may lead. Communities formed and nurtured in love will rise up for and with each other over and over again, she says. Unitarians and Universalists have come together and risen up over and over again, expressing their faith in radically different ways over the last several hundred years, expanding our hearts and minds, transforming and changing a world. And we are on a precipice. As Unitarian Universalists, we are on a precipice of transformation once again. A new set of values and covenants in, are in our midst. And these values and covenants take the principles that we've held dear and transform them into something we can take with us into a changing world. Because the world is changing. World politics are veering right as more and more governments remove rights from the people they're supposed to be serving. The climate is changing more rapidly than anyone could predict, creating weather crisis after crisis and leaving our children with a world whose ecosystem is collapsing. And Pima Children reminds us, let difficulty transform you. And it will. In my experience, we just have to stop running away. We have to learn how to stop running away. Instead of running away from the difficulty, from transformation, let us run towards each other. Hold each other during these hard times. Lift each other up to celebrate the journey and bring each other along, making the world a better place. We've already come so far from our Christian Trinity way back to pluralism now, how else can we open our hearts to transformation? Let's find out together. Amen. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit to sing our closing hymn, O Day of Light and Gladness, number 270 in the Hardback Gray Hymnal. to one another in a way that feels comfortable for you. When you go 
out into this world, find a way to be transformed. When you go, go in peace. Salam and shalom. Leave this place knowing that you are good and knowing that you are loved. Blessed be. Take your dark and your light and your love and share them with the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Enjoy coffee hour and conversation. Have a great week. And choir is going to do like a, a pickup hallelujah chorus. Oh, nice. All right. Stick around for more music.